Hello and welcome to Connect. I'm your host, Randy Shabilo. On today's show, we'll have Tamara Edwards with the Saskatchewan Rattlers, as well as Councillor David Curtin talking about the initiative to help our sister city in Ukraine. And as always, we'd like to connect with you. Follow us on Facebook at ConnectYXE, catch past interviews on our YouTube channel, email us at connectyxe at gmail.com, or leave a message at 306-665-3796. Basketball season is here in Saskatoon, and we have Tamara Edwards with the Rattlers Basketball Club. Uh, She's taking some time out of her busy schedule to shed some light on what's going on in her world. Uh, Tamara, thanks for taking a moment here with us today. Thanks so much for having me, Randy. I want to talk a little bit about yourself, uh, how you got involved with the organization uh, and where you're from. Uh, You just started here a little over a year ago, I think. Uh, Where did you come from and how did you get involved with the Rattlers? Yeah, great question. So I'm originally from Niagara, Ontario. That's where I grew up, born and raised in a really small town, 2,500 people called Vineland. Um, And I took sport business or sport management um, at Niagara College. And I was also a varsity volleyball athlete. And so after I graduated from the sport management program, I was just sort of job hunting. And then the job with the Rattlers came up and um, it was an opportunity that I couldn't pass down, even though it was a bit far away. My family supported me um, in making the move out here. And so I accepted the job and I moved out to Saskatoon uh, January 2021. And that's when I started my role with the Rattlers here. And um, it's been really great ever since. I love Saskatoon and it's uh, been really welcoming to me. And now I'm the manager of corporate partnerships here with the Rattlers. And so um, that's sort of my background and how I got here. But um, I love the sport industry and I love being involved within sport. I know over the years we've had a, a few basketball uh, clubs, organizations that have uh, come and gone. But uh, finding that there's a very, very uh, diehard, hardcore type of fan that uh, is very plugged into our, our basketball scene here. Uh, what are you experiencing uh, moving here, first of all, and, and seeing the Rattlers organization and what they're expanding? I mean, we're coming off the heels of a, a pandemic and, and re-emerging, but uh, what are you seeing for crowds and the level of interest so far? Yeah, so in general, I would say Saskatchewan is a hockey town, but basketball has grown so much over the past four or five years, especially with the Raptors winning the championship, sort of putting basketball in Canada on the map and the participation, whether it's at the youth level or the adult level, like we are at professional, it's just grown exponentially so much. And um, the Canadian Elite Basketball League, which is the league that we play in, has only been around for four years. So we're going into our fourth season. But just from the start of the year until we are now, like the growth is exponential in what we've been able to do and the reach that we've been able to have. We are a province-wide team, so we sort of cater to every place in the province. And But we do play here in Saskatoon, and um, we've gotten really great feedback um, within the diehard community of basketball, but then also just exposing basketball to um, everyone else because it's so inclusive and it's such an inclusive environment no matter your gender your skin color your race it's such an inclusive environment and that's what, something that we really pride on um, is uh, being that place where people can come and, and feel comfortable at and that's what basketball is all about and I love being involved in that but we've seen some really great growth of the sport um, within Saskatoon here for sure. I find that interesting uh, we've just had city council uh pass an initiative with the Canadian Tire and uh, Michael Linklater uh, escapes sports with the new basketball court in River Landing. So it's 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 taking good root here. And, and we've had the three on three championships downtown. Um, when you look at the league itself, uh, how many teams are in the league and, and what's happening at that level? Yeah, so when the league first started in 2019, there was six teams across Canada. Um, And now in only our fourth season, we're up to 10 franchises coast to coast. So uh, we have Fraser Valley, BC, we have Edmonton, us here in Saskatchewan. And then in Ontario, there is Ottawa, Scarborough, Guelph, Hamilton, Niagara, and uh, Montreal, and in Newfoundland. So um, just within a pandemic year, we've added three new franchises, which is sort of unheard of in most professional leagues. And so that's something that we're really excited about is to be able to grow and to expand into different markets across Canada during a pandemic and just um, 
be able to give fans more basketball because now that there's 10 teams, there's more home games for people to attend and um, more players that can able to enter the league and being able to play in front of their home crowd. And um, so the, the growth of the league is so awesome and to expand in such hard times, it's, it's been really great. So what are you experiencing with uh, the players themselves? Are they uh, mostly local? Are they traded throughout the season, preseason, postseason? Uh, where, where do they come from and, and what levels do they uh, arrive at from universities or high school and so on? So 70% of our roster has to be Canadian. So similar to uh, the rules that the CFL has. Um, but most of our guys that are Canadian haven't actually been in Canada for a while because most of them either played um, in the States where they played D1. So we get a lot of players who have played D1 basketball in the States. And then for professional, they have gone overseas or they played in the NBA G League, which is the NBA farm team. So they haven't actually come and played in front of their home crowd or in front of their friends and family in a while. So it's nice for them to come back to Canada and experience Canada basketball, um, be able to play in front of their friend and friends and family. But we do carry one international player and around three Americans as well. So it's a pretty diverse group and our guys are so awesome. They have such unique stories, um, whether they played in Europe. I have some, I met some guys who have played Tokyo, really cool places around the world or um, this past year, I think around the CEBL, there was about five or six guys who got actual NBA contracts, which was really awesome for the league. And so just to hear their stories and to be able to um, contribute to them playing back here in Canada, um, it's really a, it's really a sight to see. And, and be clear about that. This is a professional basketball league for Canada. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we are fully men's professional. Um, and so our pair, our players, um, are just like NBA players, but I would say we try and be the feeder league for NBA. So uh, we're not quite at the sort of NBA level, and um, but it's just like it's similar to the relationship of CFL and NFL. Um, but so the CFL is the Canadian version, and then the NFL is sort of the American version. Um, that's what we here are with the Canadian Elite Basketball League. So yeah, full men's professional basketball team. Um, our age ranges for our players around like. 25 to 30, or we, we also do a U sport draft, which means that we draft um, guys who are on current university rosters who, so that they can get professional experience playing at a high level. I find that remarkable that, uh, that the level of interest and in, in it comes from all corners of the province. Uh, when we're looking at the expansion of the teams, do they travel uh, so many days a month or when is the season start and end for you? So we play during the summertime, which is different to, I would say, most basketball leagues. But the reason why we do that is so that we can recruit the top talent and so that we aren't competing with, say, the NBA or the NBA G League. So guys can go and play in those leagues during the winter and then they can come play for us during the summer. So we play from May to August. So our home opener this year is May 25th. Um, so we play a 20 home, or 20 game schedule, but so we play 10 home games, 10 away games. So there's a lot to fit in within a summer, lots of travel going coast to coast in Canada, but it makes for a really upbeat, exciting summer. Um, and then here in Saskatchewan, we mostly play during the week. And so it's really accessible um, up at the Sastel Center to be able to go and come out, enjoy a night out with your family, your friends, your coworkers, that kind of thing. Um, and our ticket prices are fairly affordable. And so um, we're really looking forward to the summer being back to a full regular season um, and being able to see everyone's faces in the building. What do you do, uh, the organization, I guess, and, and the players themselves? Do they find moving here to Saskatoon? Do they come for practices and go back home to another city or are they actual residents of Saskatoon? So during the summer, all of our guys live here in Market in Saskatoon. Um, and it's really nice to have that because they get to experience sort of local product within Saskatoon, immerse themselves within the community. We do a lot of things with our season ticket members where they can meet the players and you can see our guys walking down the street, going to the mall type of thing. You can walk up, say hi to them. Um, it's just a really good to build that community within Saskatoon. And they love the summers here. They love spending time by the river and doing all the things, the festivals that Saskatoon has to offer. Um, and so it's nice to have them here during market the whole time. And then once the season's done, um, they can go back to their families or go and play in another professional league um, wherever they choose. And your role with the organization, you're, you're looking at, at partnerships. What would that entail? 
So my role specifically is working with businesses to create partnerships um, and sponsorships within the team. So whether that's fan activations, signage within the building, I work with business to business to help create and to um, implement their marketing initiatives and what your goals are as a company and how we can work that within a sports team. Um, and so I love working with large businesses, your mom and pop shop, small ones. Um, we have something for everyone. If you want to be involved with the sports team, um, I'm your girl. And so it's, uh, it's really fun to build those relationships and get to meet so many different businesses and business owners and being able to help them achieve their goals. I find that uh, most fascinating, if you will, that uh, it's a, you mentioned earlier inclusive uh, and, and that it's not just for major corporations, but everyone can participate in some way. And I commend the organization for having that door open for a lot of medium, small business owners to participate. Uh, what are the, the packages that you sell uh, in terms of season tickets? And, and there, there must be a playoff season at the end of all this, I would hope. Yeah, so we have different ticketing options that we have available. Obviously, we have our season tickets, which are our 10 home games and then one potential playoff game. But then we also have our three game bundles, which are more of a flexible option where you get to choose three games throughout the year or we have set three games that you can choose from um, so that you can sort of get a little bit of experience but not committing to a full season. And then we also have our single games that are um, available online and then also at the door at our venue. So um, we have a lot of options that are flexible and we do payment plans as well so that you don't have to pay all up front. Um, and so we try and make it available that there's something for those ticketing options. I find that uh, just invigorating. I can't wait for the season to get underway. And uh, if, if we wanted to actually get a hold of you or uh, to get tickets or packages like that, would we contact the uh, the box office yourself or how would we do that? So for more ticket information and to actually buy online, you can visit our website at therattlers.ca. So T-H-E rattlers.ca. Um, if you're a business inter interested in sponsorship, you can contact me directly. My email is tedwards at therattlers.ca. Um, and so our website's a really great um, tool to see our players and different offerings that we have and what's going on with the team. So I would say those are your, your two main outlets for us. Tamara, thanks for uh, taking that time out today. Uh, Tamara Edwards, the uh, manager for corporate partnerships with the Rattlers. Uh, we hope to see you uh, in the facility here coming up in May and best of luck to the team. Thanks so much, Randy. Stay with us, folks. We're going to be right back. <music> 